Hello and welcome to the Grass Valley Training Lab. I'm Olaf Barr and this time we're talking about K2 Dyno and the new version 3.5. And here's what's new. In order to use Dyno 3.5 we want to make sure that we're using Summit 9.5 and also SNFS 4.72. I'll show you how to check for that. Uh, there's a new IP configuration window on the Dyno which is very nice. Multi-Summit workflows as well as Dyno Universe workflows. Adding remote clips to playlists localizing a remote clip in a playlist, utilizing the keyboard arrows for navigation, the different uses of the F keys, new additions in the favorites bar, sorting in a playlist, new send destination changes, and an enhanced way to use searches. In order to take full advantage of the software 9.5 for Summit, we want to make sure that you're using the correct version of SNFS. Uh, that is the file system management system that we have in place. And what we want to be able to do is check and make sure that you're running the right version. And if not, then you need to uninstall and reinstall that. So here's how you do it. So we can minimize this window for App Center. Then under the Windows Start menu, Control Panel, Programs and Features, and then here, if you see closer to the bottom, it's listed as SNFS. And you just want to make sure that you're running the right version, 4.7.2 for this Summit 9.5 build. So again, if you're not running the correct version of SNFS, you'll want to uninstall it. First, make sure that App Center is not running. Then you want to make sure that you also have McAfee, the Windows Embedded Security, in update mode. Uninstall that through Windows, the SNFS that's incorrect. Do a restart install the correct version of SNFS, do a restart, and then once that last restart comes up, make sure that McAfee, the Windows Embedded Security Manager, is back into protect mode, and then you take full advantage of the Summit 9.5 version of software. Configuring the Summit IP addresses can now be managed at the Dyna level as well. What we were up against was host tables really need to be the same for the IP addresses as well as the computer name for each device. So this became typically a problem to make sure that everything was updated correctly and that all the host tables matched. Well, as long as the IP address is available and, and already updated on the Summit side, the Dyno can see it and we can go ahead and get right into that configuration. And here's how. So when my Dyno boots up and I see the server list, I'll select the server that I want to make some changes or at least maybe just check on it. Click configure and here I can see the different connections that I have. In this case, it's a media connection. This is the IP address. If I wanted to change this, just click in here, enter the new numbers, hit OK, as well as for the subnet, gateway if you have that. And then what type of network connection is it? Is it a media or a control connection? And I'll keep it back on media. And you can make these changes for these other connections as well. And if you're happy, hit accept. If not, to cancel, just hit back. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use Summit 3G-009 as my main Summit to connect to. So I'm going to reconnect. I'm going to create a new session. And here we can see all of the um, normal ones that are available. This is a 4x2 configuration that I have set up for that Summit. But here we can see also the other server. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to use this and use this. So now I've got four more additional cameras and we can see here that I'm using A through H. That's these buttons here on the controller. Or if I were to use the M1, M2, I could use that as well just by deselecting A through H. And now we can see that these will end up being utilized on the other tier of the M1 key. So if I don't like the M1 key, A through D are my local server, my Summit 3G09. Those are the angles that belong to it. Then if I hit the M1 key and light that up, then the A through D keys would be those other angles. I'm a big fan of just putting them all through A through H and just using the shift key and not using the M1, M2 key. So I'm going to use the A through H key and I'm going to set my loop length, maybe name my session. In this case, it's just session one and hit start. So I just want to take a moment to have a brief conversation about the difference between a K2 Dyno Universe workflow and a multi-summit workflow. Multi-summit workflow can work with pretty much anything that's SD or HD uh, and, and just that it's also over the one gig network. So you're not using the 10 gig cards that can go into a summit now, um, but again, you can take 
summits and stack them and have all of those channels fall under one dyno. So imagine, if you will, a, a really nice stack of them and you have plenty of channels of inputs. Um, you could actually create a clip that has 24 different angles. If you had three summits, all with eight channels, going into one dyno and you still had two or four outputs on yet another summit. All of that can be shared, and so that's, that's a little bit mind-blowing, but at the same time, let's scale that down and say, well, what about just the K2 Dyno Universe workflow? Well, that's really geared towards ultra high def or the uh, high frame rate workflows such as 6X or even um, 3X for, for a 1080p workflow. Um, so, but what I really want you to understand is that one really requires, the, the universe requires SSD uh, in the summits as well as a 10 gig connection. And when you're looking at the, just the multi-summit workflows, there you only need the one gig network with the one gig NICs um, on a one gig switch, it's really nice. And then all you have to do is stack those summits. And when those channels become available, like I just showed you, we can do those on an A through H or an M1 or an M2. And those are just different tiers. Where are you gonna find all of those channels? But again, remember, if you're gonna make one clip, one clip that has ins and outs, you're gonna actually have an in and out angle for all of those angles that you're recording. So um, powerful enough just as it is, you don't need all of the SSD and all the one, uh, the 10 gig just to do a multi-summit workflow, but you do for Dino Universe. And I think there's been a lot of questions about that. All right, let's get back into this. Keyboard arrows for navigation. Not all operators use a keyboard, but they sure are nice when you have them. They come in very handy. Uh, one is for navigation, two is because there's a lot of features that are within the keyboard itself. Remember, everything that we design about the dyno can all be done locally without a keyboard. But again, this is a nice little attachment if you have the desk space to incorporate it. So first off uh, is going to be the keyboard arrow keys that we can use now for navigation within a bin. So here on this little keyboard, you can see in the corner of my arrow keys, I can just use this to navigate around and on the dyno, you see how it navigates. So pretty simple. So of course, if I have arrow keys, I really would like a nice way to cue that up. The enter key has already been taken with naming a clip or a playlist or a bin. So the enter key being already used, we put it as close as we could without getting in the way, and that's the F12 key. So from now on, the F12 key is always active as a cue up button. So select this, I've already got that clip selected, hit the F12 key, and it cues. Arrow over. F12 key and it cues. Uh, the other one that was always used is the F1 key and that was for ratings. And you would just hit that and add three stars and we'll add more stars here in the future. But for now, the F1 key is still gonna be uh, staying for ratings. But what we've done is we've opened up more F keys for keywords and for other uses as well. So now you have the ability to use F2 through F11, Shift F1, through F12, and control F1 through F12. So what can we use these F keys for? It's very cool and I'm gonna show you right now. The first thing is in the favorites bar. So to start with, I've already put a couple things up in my favorites bar. If I pull this down, you can see that. I've got a great playlist going. I've got one key play that's a save. Uh, and we wanna revisit that a couple of times. So when we go and close this back up, and open up the favorites bar, we can select the clip here. On the dyno, hit the shift button, and here you see set F keys becomes white. So if I select that, now I can hit F keys on the keyboard and assign an F key to that particular clip. So in this case, I'm gonna assign it F6. And now in the upper corner, you see that it says F6 for that clip. For the playlist as well, I'm gonna select that, and that's going to be shift F1 but I know every time I want to queue up that playlist, it's Shift F1 and it'll be there. Then deselect, set F keys, and now I'm ready to use those at any time. So I might be working and I'm in live, I'm doing some replays, and the producer says, hey, queue up that great save. I hit F6 on the keyboard, and here you can see the clip is queued up. Roll it, do the replay. Wanted to see that great playlist that I was working on? Shift F1, because that's where I hit it and automatically you can see that the dyno goes right to that playlist. Cue it up and roll it for a replay. So now you have a lot of flexibility with 32 F keys. Remember F1 is still the ratings and F12 is queue up, 
but you have the shift F1 through F12, you have control F1 through F12, and still F2 through F11 that you can assign to either way keywords, playlists, or clips. Very powerful. But there's one more application that we can use those F keys for, and I'm going to show you that in just a little bit. But next, what I want to get you on to, triple click in the favorites bar. So there's been the request that if I slide down to expose the favorites bar, a quicker way to cue a playlist from this position. Now if I just triple tap, one, two, three, I actually cue the playlist. It opens it and cues it right away. Remember, a clip that's in the favorites bar is just a double tap, one, two, and it cues the clip. A playlist, just to open it up, is just double tap on the favorites bar. But now we've added the triple tap to a playlist and it cues the playlist. One of the favorite things about my job is getting to spend time with operators and getting their feedback and learning from them. I kid you not, they have such great ideas and I'm like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> One of them, of course, is the favorites bar is fantastic. It speeds up the workflow, but how can we make it even faster? And one of those that came out of um, one of our installations was the request to actually drag and drop clips from your highlight bin right into a playlist that's in the favorites bar. Pretty smart, I know, but I didn't think of it. All right, here's how you do it. So here you can see that I have only one clip in this playlist. I'm gonna to go to the highlights, slide down to expose the favorites bar, select a clip by holding my finger on it, dragging and dropping. And there you see the little dotted lines around the playlist. That means it just took an action. So if we go back to the playlist, you can see now that we have two clips in that playlist. All right, I'm gonna go back to the highlights page again. I'm gonna select a group of them. So I'm gonna select, and by holding down the function key, I'm gonna select more than one. And in the order that I made that selection, I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop right into that playlist. You see again, the dotted lines around the playlist. When I go back to that, you can see there that we've dropped in those clips right into the playlist. So you can see what a great idea this is. But of course, the conversation just doesn't stop there. With operators, it's, well, if you can do that, can you do this? And this is, can you combine playlists? And yes, you can with Dino 3.5, and here's how. Once again, I'm going to slide down to reveal the favorites bar. I'm already looking at my playlists. If I look out here and see that I have the playlist that I'm working with, but I have playlist two that has a handful of clips in that. I can select it, drag and drop, and throw that right in there. Again, you saw that dotted line showing that there was an action taken, and now when we open up that playlist, we can see that all of those clips have been added to that playlist. I can't get over how powerful that really is in the simplicity of a drag and drop to combine playlists. No more copy paste or having to go out and find a bunch of clips and build that playlist. But of course, as operators are, they don't stop with just two ideas. No, they've got a lot more than that. And the third one that came from this discussion is, well, what about sort? I want to be able to sort the entire playlist because now it's not necessarily in a chronological order and I'd like it to be. Well, that's a simple step. And it says right here, sort, when I push that button, you can clearly see that it says sort all the items in the playlist and I select yes please. It then sorts the playlist according to the timecode endpoint for each clip. Well before we leave playlists there's one more thing that I'd like to show you and that is adding a remote clip to a playlist but now as a reference. So this has been a long time in the making and I'm very happy to say finally in 3.5 if you're going to use clips that are remote on a, on a ShareFlex Summit, uh, you can now use them as a reference. Once again, I kind of mentioned this earlier in the beginning, that you no longer need to transfer a clip first before using it in your local playlist. So really, really cool feature. I'm super excited that we're delivering this. Let me show you how it works. So I'm going to my playlist. You can see three clips are already loaded into this playlist. I'm now going to navigate to the library. And if I use the middle bar to zoom out, to see everything that's on the server list. Here's the other one that I'm going to use. So Summit SSD1. Double tap to open that. Drill down and look for a folder. Hey, there's an Olaf folder that I'm going to use. And maybe I'm going to utilize this uh, particular clip, uh, Sand Shoe. And on the controller, I'm just going to hit Add PL. 
you'll see again the little dotted lines going around the clip showing that uh, there was some action taken there. And if I go to the playlist, we can see that it is now at the bottom of the playlist. Again, anytime I want to move that around, just drag and drop. But the idea is, is that it is using reference material. It hasn't transferred it yet. If I now want to make it local, we have a step included for that. Selecting the clip, I see at the bottom left in blue, it says the description of what the clip is. I select that. That's the properties for that particular clip. And here it says make local. And if I select that, it will now start a transfer to make that clip a local clip. And you can see again in the reference here that it's going through a transfer process. Um, and once that happens, the connection icon will disappear. So you might expect that now that I made it local, that as it transfers that it would show up in my highlights bin, but I didn't copy and paste it to that location or use maybe an F key to transfer it right directly to my highlights bin. So we actually temporarily hold it in an imports folder until you want to move it and take it to a particular bin. So I'll show you where to go for that. Once again, go back to the library, see the server list. I'm going to go into my local summit that I'm working on, go to the V drive, the dyno. Here I see the session that I'm working on. And here you can see exports, highlights, imports, and the imports folder is where that's going to live. Using function keys to send content. I told you that there was one more thing that the F keys could be applied to, and that would be transfers. I know that if I have a lot of different locations that I need content to go to, either way different summits that are on my network, maybe a legacy uh, replay product that I need the content to be sent to, or just to archive. Um, well, I want to have that ability to um, set up that destination on my F keys so it really is at the touch of a finger. So within the dyno, we now have that as part of the configuration. Uh, let's check this out. So I'm going to select config, go to the network tab at the top, and then select send list. First is copy and paste in the library. It's going to automatically use GXF, and that's if I'm going to go ahead and copy paste something into my local library or into another summits library. And here you still have the ability to turn off or on what angles that you really want to use uh, and get copy and pasted if there's a lot of angles available um, from one particular clip. Next down is the V drive or the default bin, and that's something that lives locally on my summit as well. And here again, you get to set up how many different angles you want to send at that time. And that again is just by using the add library. So that's already kind of selected and it's, it's really to help you send more or fewer angles at this point. But the next one down, if we look at what we're going to select here again, we can have a different capability of getting content out. So I can use the panel, that's to use the shift send key or in some window applications, you'll see that it'll be a shift and a send function that way. Here I have the choices. Do I want it to be a GXF, an MXF wrapper, or an MOV wrapper? And if I don't want to use the panel, maybe I want to use just Alt-Z. And that would be the Alt-Z combination on a keyboard that is very common with some legacy products. But here again is the F key. And if I select that and say, well, what F key would you like to utilize? Select Shift on the controller, which lights up the set F keys, and I've hit that. And now I can go ahead and assign it some F keys. So in this case, I want it to go to that location in the event that I hit Shift F3. And here you can see, it actually gives you in the little description window, Shift F3 is how that's going to be enabled. Then I'm just going to go ahead and get out of that mode by Shift and set F key again. Now it's ready to go. If I want to create a new destination, I'm just going to simply select new at the bottom there. And now it says, well, let's go ahead and browse for a location. Hit the browse key. And I'm going to search out where I'd like to go. I'm going to actually create a new folder. I'm going to name that one. and then hit accept. And there it's going to the V drive and Olaf's clips. Now that could be a network drive, it could be a USB drive that's connected to the dyno or to the summit. So we now have anything that's mappable 
uh, on those systems. And let's say that you need permission though to get into one of those folders, we've got a step for that too. Here at the top, you can see FTP login. I can select that, enter a username, enter a password, and now I have access to that folder that's normally protected by uh, rights permissions. So notice that I have no method entered on how I'm going to trigger this send function. So in this case, I'm going to use the Alt-Z. You can see there it says it Alt-Z. And I want to select just the A and B angle. That's the only two out of the eight angles that I'm going to clip off. I just want to send the A and B angle uh, to that location. So and then I might go ahead and set up another folder for the C and D angles just to kind of separate content because I know that I might be recording a lot of different angles, but they very well could be specific in where they need to end up once I've created them. And I don't want to have to sit there and turn things on and off while the event is happening. I just want to hit F keys and be able to send that content out. So the F keys really have become something very powerful on its own right and now just a faster level of getting content from point A to point B. And that really could be just another summit, another highlight bin on another summit that's, that's got ShareFlex enabled. Or again, like I said, it could be a network drive and an editor is waiting for that content to show up. I don't have to go and hunt that location down anymore once I've set it up. I just use those F keys. Very, very cool. Dino's use of metadata tags and its ability to search those tags very quickly and efficiently, especially in the search bins, has gone up one more level, which is really nice of a feature. Uh, and that's the ability to add in the criteria of a search folder, even if it's a control F or that you're actually just uh, doing some criteria based searches to include the entire network. And that's new in 3.5. So let me take you through that for just a moment. So when I select search and go to my search bins here in my three stars, uh, that's just an example. I'm going to select shift on the dyno controller, select criteria. And here at the top, you can see it says session only. If I select that, we can maybe just look at the library for this particular search or the session and the library and new in three, five is all shared. So what this does, of course, it's going to look at everything on the network. It's going to give me a return of every clip that's available that has three stars. But I wouldn't use this so much for ratings unless I was building a melt because then I would actually select that entire everything that's in that folder, create a playlist and start the melt. What I think is really important, though, is that I'm finding that one play, that one player. And I need to just quickly do a control F on my keyboard or utilize the control F bin on here and I want to look at the entire network for those search results. Um, really powerful to find one needle in the haystack. Dino can do it. I think by now it's pretty clear how much I really appreciate this product. The K2 Dino is really fast and smart in so many ways, but I want to make sure that I'm doing a good enough job in getting you that information. I know that there's a lot of videos on YouTube, but maybe you're not getting the tips that you really want in how to make things happen faster, or maybe just some shortcuts that I know about and I haven't done a good enough job in putting that into a video. So I'd like to start a series on tips. So my request to you is to use this email address and send me some tip requests and I'll get those out to you guys as soon as possible. Well, that wraps up another episode. Thank you for joining me on this presentation of Dino 3.5 and what's new. And as always, please continue to visit the Grass Valley website for updated release information and links to documents and additional training videos.